Thomas Jefferson was probably the most brilliant man ever to serve as president of the United States. There's an anecdotal story about um, President Kennedy, who once held a uh, dinner at the White House for all the living Nobel Prize winners of America. And he's reported to have said to those individuals, this is the greatest assemblage of genius at any time for dinner in the White House, except when Thomas Jefferson dined alone. And what he meant by that was that Jefferson was brilliant. He was a scientist, he was an architect, he designed the home Monticello, he was an agricultural expert, he of course was a great political writer, along with Alexander Hamilton and John Jay, he wrote the Federalist Papers, um, it was certainly a very, very talented, brilliant man. And John uh, Thomas Jefferson had a great interest in religion, and his religion would be what you'd call deism. By deism meant that he believed in God, but didn't believe in any formal religion for the simple reason that he was a rationalist. He felt that if religion was only revealed, it wasn't true. It had to be based on reason. And so he did not like the concept of the Old Testament or the New Testament, and he didn't like Judaism because it was a revealed religion, and he denied the truth of revelation. So for Thomas Jefferson, um, the uh, Bible's depiction of God, the Old Testament, the Torah's uh, depiction of God, was he considered to be uh, cruel and harsh. And he said that the ancient Jewish priesthood, the Kohanim, their ethics were, his word, were vicious. And so he didn't have a high regard for the Jewish faith. Even though he reflected on the Bible and thought about the Bible, he rejected the Jewish faith. So he was anti-Jewish in that sense. And yet that didn't stop Thomas Jefferson from uh, reaching out to the Jewish community. And we have letters that he wrote to some of the famous Jews at the time. One of them was a gentleman by the name of uh, Dr. Jacob de la Mata, who was a leader in Charleston, South Carolina, where there was a large Jewish community. He wrote to Dr. de la Mata uh, saying that as far as he was concerned, when it comes to religion, divided we stand, united we fall. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, basically, divided we stand, he meant as long as we have religious diversity, it makes a nation strong. But if we have just one religion in what we'd call an established church, then that makes a nation weak. So he said, divided we stand, united we fall. And that was his belief. And later on, he wrote to uh, another famous Jewish leader by the name of Mordechai Manuel Noah, who we'll speak about later. And he said to Mordechai Manuel Noah, he regretted the persecution of Jews through the ages. And he said that he hoped in this new republic, this wonderful new republic called the United States of America, that Jews would take their rightful place in what he called the halls of government, that Jews would seek and win elective office. So Thomas Jefferson was a mixed bag. He was sort of anti-Jewish or anti-Judaism, let's put it that way, but he had positive relations with Jewish people. An interesting uh, sidelight to Thomas Jefferson's life is uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, had a talent for so many things. And one thing he couldn't do was he couldn't make money. So when he died, he was almost broke. And his famous house, Monticello, that I'm sure some of you have visited in Virginia, was sold and eventually was turned into a farmhouse. And a Jewish man by the name of Uriah P. Levy, who was a Commodore, a professional naval officer in the United States Navy, he bought the house, Monticello, and he preserved it. So if you go to Virginia today, to Charlottesville, and you go to see Monticello, that's a legacy of this famous uh, Jewish man, um, Noah, Mordechai Manuel Noah, who bought the house and preserved it. As a matter of fact, his mother's grave is located on the property. So we see that Thomas Jefferson, again, was a man who didn't have a high opinion of Jewish, of Jewish religion, but he believed in religious liberty. And one of the things he was most proud of in his life was that he wrote the Virginia Statute on religious liberty, which was a model for all the other states for uh, religious liberty in the early American days.